Thank you for joining me for the third episode of Motivated Riders. This week, I was excited to work with another guest speaker, who I'm sure many of you from the Ottawa Valley will know quite well. Animal chiropractor Dr. Allison Seely has sent me footage to help show horse owners and riders the complex anatomy of the horse's neck and issues that can happen to restrict its motion. Dr. Seely published her first book in 2019 and is going to be sharing a chapter of it with us all. Stay tuned after we hear from Dr. Seely as I discuss how us as riders can have a direct effect on the horse's neck with the aids that we use while under saddle. Hello, I'm going to talk to you guys today uh, in your individual houses where you're all being socially isolated and more especially and very sadly away from your horses. Um, I'd like to talk to you today about the neck of the horse, what causes a neck subluxation in a horse, and uh, I will show you my adjusting a horse's neck as well as the anatomy of the neck in a moment. I will start with a preamble from my book of a story about a horse's neck. I hope you can do some magic, was Peppa's dour greeting when I arrived. This girl is going downhill fast. I've heard good things about you, even though my vet thinks I'm kind of crazy to spend money on a horse chiro. But I'm kind of stuck, and besides, nothing he has done for her has helped one iota. She explained that the mare belonged to her 14-year-old daughter. She had purchased the mare after long deliberation and a rigorous search on the net. But the horse had flipped out at being loaded on the trailer and had gone over backwards when she reared. They'd managed to bring her home, but she had not eaten since. I think she's down a good 200 pounds. The only food we can get into her has to be offered by hand. You found me trying to find, get her to eat some hay. But it's a kind of slow process, handful by handful. My daughter has more patience, but she's at school all day. We urged the mare to her feet. She was a classy-looking, glossy, black thoroughbred, but her eyes were dull, and her coat had lost, lost its gloss. She was clearly languishing with a calorie deficit. I felt her atlas. This is always the first bone I palpate. This one was crazy, hot, and unmoving. I moved my hands along the next two vertebrae. Again, there was no motion, and the segments were hot to touch. When did this happen, I asked. I was told the accident was six days earlier. I had taken the not eating to be hyperbole. The weight loss and the inflamed segment suggested that Pippa was not exaggerating. I leveraged my hand behind the wings of the atlas and adjusted. It would have been ideal to see radiographs of the neck vertebrae, but that was beyond the scope and the economics of equine medicine in the valley. I had to reassure myself with a thorough palpating of the segment that there was no vertebral fracture or dislocation. The adjustment produced the audible crack that often scares the uninitiated. Pippa looked unperturbed. She was clearly a chiropractic patient. The second and the third vertebrae went in unison when I flecked the neck, horse's neck towards me. Before I could continue to the rest of the spine, the mare, unimaginatively called Blackie, started to arch her head to the left and then to the right. She shook her head vigorously, creating more cracking noises as different vertebrae were mobilized. She then lowered her head and started eating nonchalantly on a pile of hay that was lying on the floor. Holy moly, breathed Bobby. That's the piece of magic you asked for, isn't it, Pippa? That's just a little segment describing what happens when um, a neck of a horse is adjusted, sometimes miraculous changes. Necks of horses, uh, just like people, just like dogs, can go out of alignment through a number of ways. You'll see your horse trying to graze on the far side of a field, a head stuck under the under the fence. Great way to get a neck subluxated. Um, we do it by putting halters on horses and horses will grab at each other's halters. We call it halter tag. There's another good source. We do it when we put bits in horses' mouths and crank them down and pull them into too tight a frame. And we do it just by riding. Um, and uh, putting too much effort on one rein or the other. Horses do it themselves. They cavort around the field. They fall. They roll. No end of ways. What I will next show you is a video of me adjusting a horse's neck and show you where the anatomy of the neck lies, where the actual vertebrae 
um, are oriented in the horse's neck. I'm going to show you where the neck of a horse is. Everyone knows this is the neck, um, but people tend to think this is the spine coming along the back, whereas it comes here, dips down, and comes right through here. That right under my fingers is actually the spine of a horse. So we've got this whole zone of nuchal ligament, which is marvelous solid tissue that helps a horse stand when it's sleeping and it's part of the stay apparatus but the actual spine comes down here so very first vertebrae is right up here behind the ears then there's the second third fourth fifth sixth and the seventh is tucked right under the scapula and so when i'm checking a horse i'm checking for the motion of each of these joints and when i find it's out i just put pressure in and along the line that that joint wants to move, I will adjust and restore motion. And something you can do at home, because some of you are not having anyone out to the stables while the COVID virus is on, you can keep flexibility with stretches. Okay. Get him excited about this, and then you bring him back. He's a cheat, you can do this with his bum against the wall. Got a nice big piece there. A nice long carrot. And ultimately, come on up there. You can get him stretching and Definitely for this horse and many of them, you want their bum right up tight against a wall so they're not backing up. But you can bring his neck all the way back to here so that you're getting a stretch through there. And then you can do the same using this scapula all the way up the scapula so you're getting stretching. And truly, if everyone did yoga, if horses all did yoga, they'd need less adjusting. So doing that will keep them moving and you would be adjusting. The last one, and again, I suspect for him this would be much better against a wall. You can bring it right down here. Can you see that? Come on down. All the way down. Come on. I'm going to reward him because he's limited in terms of his flexibility and you don't want to push a stretch. But if you can get it right down between his front legs, you're forcing him to do an abdominal contraction. You're making him do a sit-up as he reaches down to get that carrot, which is fantastic for his low back and super for the flexibility through the pole. On behalf of Dr. Seeley, I hope that you enjoyed hearing a segment from her new book and that you've gained a better understanding of the complexity of the anatomy of the horse's neck. My horse always enjoys when I do carrot stretches, so I'm sure that your horse will be excited that you received that homework as well. During Dr. Seely's video, she mentioned the stay apparatus, which refers to the ability the horse has to sleep while it remains standing. If you haven't researched this term or heard this term before, I would encourage viewers to do so to gain a better understanding of our horses and how they use their front and their hind limbs in order to do so. Before we wrap up, I'm now going to discuss how riders can directly affect the horse's neck through the use of our aids and our contact. As Dr. Seeley mentioned, the list of reasons a horse can experience neck subluxations goes on and on, but the good news is riders can prevent part of that list as they gain awareness. The position in which a horse holds its head and neck while under saddle greatly influences its ability to move. In an article featured in The Horse, Dr. Hillary Clayton states that if a horse is going with his head in the air and his neck hollow, his back is going to be more hollow, so he's more likely to get arthritis, and he's not going to perform the way we want him to in competitions. In this article, she goes on to teach that the horse also carries his neck in a more vertical position than many other animals, which requires significant muscular support. Because of this, most of the neck's top line isn't defined by bone, but by muscle. I invite viewers to see the training pyramid, which is a great tool that riders should be aware of. 
The base of the pyramid teaches that we need to develop rhythm and relaxation before we can build on other skills with our horses. Developing rhythm and relaxation involves many things, but for the purpose of this video, I am linking these building blocks to the position of the horse's neck. If a horse is struggling to maintain a consistent tempo or move with suppleness, it may be leaning on your hands, or you may not be providing adequate release of contact, which prevents the horse from carrying his neck properly. When a horse does not carry themselves through their neck, rhythm and relaxation can be lost during transitions or different parts of your ride. Another common issue riders experience if the horse becomes hollow or short through their neck is having their horse rush or get ahead of them. Working with your horse to produce a relaxed stretch down circle is an excellent way to press the pause or reset button in your ride. After allowing the horse to stretch long and low while still moving through its back, a rider can gather the contact again and work on the problematic area in which the horse began to shorten or tighten through their neck. Practice and strengthening of muscles will help build consistency and allow horses and their riders to work in harmony as the rider uses leg and hand to communicate with their horse. Whether you have access to your horse or not during the business closures of the coronavirus outbreak, I hope that discussing the horse's neck will make you more aware for when you're watching your horse maneuver in the paddock or when you're back in the saddle. See you next week.